What's up everybody? This is Brian. And I'm Logan. And this is Pops. Yep. Whoa. Look at me. <sighs> and this is Bottoms, Middles, Dumpling, and everyone else. <laughs> if you don't know, you gotta stick around. And you've seen. <laughs> and you've seen. And we're good guys. <laughs> Hi team. Happy Wednesday. Hello, my beautiful angel babe. So yesterday we put up a poll in our community page. If you guys did not see it, we'll put it up on the screen over here. But we asked you guys exactly what you wanted to see for today's video. And it basically just came down to a budget video. I basically made the poll between budget alternative card discussion or just budget decks in general. And it was pretty fair back and forth. So yeah. I decided we'd just kind of do an all-encompassing budget video. Yeah, and we haven't really talked about budget stuff on the channel yet. So we're just going to give you our opinion on budget options and just a bunch of budget stuff in general. So in this video, we will be announcing the giveaway winner from last week's pop opening. And that being said, before we get into the actual video, if you guys are not already a subscriber, go down and hit that subscribe button, throw this video a like, and then also comment down below what you think are really good budget options or low budget decks that you guys think would be a really, really good option in this specific meta. We also have an Instagram, it's at CrushCardsYGO. We're on there all the time, answering messages, hanging out, posting stories, posting polls, all that fun stuff. It's Instagram. We also have a super wholesome Discord. It's absolutely wonderful. I've put new roles in recently. It's been super active. Lots of growth lately. It's really wonderful. I love our Discord so, so much. So be sure to check it out. Links in the description. And then last but not least, if you want to further support the channel, we have a Patreon. It's been booming lately. Yeah. I just put the bloopers for June up. They're hysterical. <laughs> if you want to hear Tops in his potty mouth, it's all there, <laughs> along with us screwing up a whole lot. It's great. So check out the Patreon. But if not, I'm just happy you're here. So with all that out of the way, guys, welcome to the channel. And let's get right into our budget content. Budgets. So we kind of wanted to divide this video into three parts. We're going to do budget alternatives for really expensive cards, and then we're going to talk about a couple budget decks that are really viable right now. Yep. And then at the end, we're going to have a sort of real talk advice session on budgeting and Yu-Gi-Oh in general. So right now Yu-Gi-Oh is in a really weird state because there's no organized play that's supposedly happening for the rest of the year. We also don't really have a lot of announced reprints for these really big money cards that we're going yeah. to be talking about besides like Appaloosa. And that's a big factor to a lot of this stuff too, honestly. Yeah. So right now, as you know, there's been a lot of buyouts and the market has been super inflated and it's really easy to do because no one really knows what's going on. So unfortunately, that's led to a lot of price that are higher than they necessarily should be. So we're going to try and provide the best budget ideas that we can. But with these budget options and budget ideas, they do come with some steeper requirements. It's not an easy transition necessarily from expensive to budget. So just keep that in mind while we're watching. And if there are any budget ideas that maybe we didn't mention that you thought of, please put it in the comments because we don't know everything. Yeah. And believe it or not, we do need your help. <laughs> and if there are other cards that we did not mention that you guys potentially want to see budget options for, feel yeah. free to put it in the comments and we'll do our best to try to answer those also. Yes. So that being said, let's hop right into our budget budget alternatives. Probably the biggest and first card on oh everybody's God. list was Appaloosa. Appaloosa. Appaloosa currently is sitting around $80 to $85 and it is basically that price point because <laughs> yeah. it is that good of a card. Mm -hmm. Depending on the link materials that you use for it, whether it's two, three, or four, you get that many monster negates, not a hard ones per turn. It can realistically just shut down an entire turn for mm -hmm. your opponent. So that being said, a lot of people want to know what can they substitute in their extra deck that can still provide some sort of negation. Unfortunately, the realistic answer is there is no other link monster out there that provides two, three, four negates mm -hmm. every single turn. Like, it's, it is the price that it is for a reason. The good news is that it is getting a reprint in the new upcoming gold series set, which comes out in like what? A October. Couple, a couple months. So excited for that set. So that hopefully will bring the card price down and will give everyone an option to buy another copy of the mm -hmm. card or just a different rarity of the card. Mm -hmm. But that being said, we do have one option that did come to yeah. mind. It isn't the same exact card, but it does yeah. kind of supplement the effect. And that is Nightmare Griffin. If you're able to get Nightmare Griffin out and put it in your like main monster zone mm -hmm. underneath an extra monster zone it basically just functions as a floodgate and doesn't allow your opponent to activate special summon monster effects yeah. unless they're already linked so yeah. if you can like get your griffin out and then put something above it so that mm -hmm. they can't get to the actual like the zone that griffin provides it can function as a floodgate and yeah. it doesn't allow your opponent to play we used to play it in our decks mm -hmm. all the time mm -hmm. before we had appaloosa so yeah. It really, it really does work well. Yeah, and it does function with that effect negating ability. It doesn't blatantly negate effects. It just stops them altogether. So yeah. if you can make that work, it is a link four. 
it's not a bad substitute, frankly. Yeah. And then there is also the curious Griffin combo. Some mm -hmm. decks can do it, other decks can't, but Griffin also allows you the ability to like basically get a spell or trap directly back to your field, set it, and then you can activate it. A lot of people are choosing to go with like an Imperial Order or some sort of other floodgate so they can lock their opponent not only out of special summon monsters, but also out mm -hmm. of spells and or traps. So Griffin is a really, really good and a really underestimated card yeah. this format. Next up was another card that was super highly requested, which was Access Code Talker. Access mm -hmm. Code Talker just came out <laughs> just in Eternity Code, out. so we have no confirmed reprints anytime soon, which is super unsurprising. The card's sitting, what, between $60 and $80, yeah, I think, still? Yeah, it's still one of those Link 4s that's like around 80 bucks. It's really expensive. Yeah, the card's really strong. It's really high up there right now because it's starting to see a lot more use in the extra deck. It's starting to take the place of Boral Sword in a lot of extra decks just because it can get really big and OTK like nobody's business. Business. Pop monsters like crazy. Yeah, the card's amazing. But that being said, Boral Sword is starting to trickle down very slowly. Where mm -hmm. he is at a sixteen dollar for his Ultra print, I yep. do believe. The Ultra so, is at sixteen. Right yeah, now. I would say honestly, Boral Sword is a good budget alternative to Access Code. They basically function along the same lines of yeah. get big, beat down. So Boral Sword being a $16 card, we know that that may not be like the best budget option for certain people, but it is way easier to access than an $80 access code mm -hmm. or an $80 Appaloosa. So yeah. to have a $16 card in your extra deck that not only allows you to go in for game, but can just like target certain monsters on your opponent's field if it's like a threat and then switch into defense. Mm -hmm. And like it, it does do a lot. Boral Sword is a huge utility card. It's had three reprints now, so I think being able to pick that card up. I mean, I know that I bought mm -hmm. ours when they were $110 a piece. Oh, so being I honestly able, forgot about that. Yeah, like, being able to pick two up for like 30 bucks right now yeah. is really, really good. But there is another alternative reprint if 16 might be a little too steep for you guys. And that is Unchained Abomination. We actually played this card in our Dragon Maid build this week. It's, I think, sitting between six and seven dollars. Mm -hmm. It's a really good card. It's a link four. Basically, just this destroy <laughs> stuff at pretty much any Everything. action in the game. I think it destroys the end phase, it destroys when it destroys something, it destroys when something happens. I don't know, the card destroys, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> something is destroyed by battle. If something is destroyed or during the end phase, it can chain and just destroy yeah. everything else. That's so ridiculous. if you really it's like really access good. code's destruction effect that it can do, Unchained Abomination can do that as well. It's a big, beefy boy. Yep, really good too. Yeah. Really easy to make. It's just two monsters, including a link, so super generic. And then two more expensive links that people have asked for are the BLS link and Avermax, both of which have the ability to not be targeted by your opponent's card effects. And of course, if you use them with IP, they can't be destroyed, but I'm pretty sure BLS already has that built in, right? Yeah, they're they also just really yeah. cute. Really cute good, guys really come strong. with a high price. Like, I think Avermax is like 35 or 40, and then the BLS link is currently sitting around $70. Yeah, he's up there. I think he's like nearly 75 right now. Mm -hmm. So there are two options that came to our mind. Both of them are a little bit more difficult to make, as we said in the beginning, mm -hmm. being a more budget option they do come with a steeper requirement and one budget alternative option for either of those cards we decided was actually a sleeper card that kind of just came out of echo it's the arrival cybers at ignister it is the really link strong. six that just came out it is a common no super. it's a super I think it's a super <laughs> it's a super out of echo it's literally 10 cents i don't yeah. think we get much more budget other than free <laughs> it's unaffected by card effects it gains attack for the amount of materials used for it so it requires three monsters with different attributes okay. these are going to be a little more deck dependent and they are going to rely on kind of what you're playing yeah. but it's only three monsters much like the BLS link is and it gains attack so it can easily get up to 3,000 yeah 4, and it's 000, unaffected 5, 000, by card effect but it's a really strong card even though it's a little specific to get out it's a 10 cent pretty darn good card if you yeah. actually read it take the time and read the card really you'll, good you'll be surprised but then if you really just don't have that card or have access to it Borloads like two dollars. Yeah. Borload is can be targeted just like those cards. Yeah. Borloads kind of fallen out of favor, but it does do a lot. It still allows yeah. you to steal your opponent's monster. Borload was the yeah. OG best boy. I don't know <laughs> what everyone's sleeping on Borload for, but I mean, whatever. Who am I? And then one of the next requests is Pot of Extravagance. Oh, this is boy. a card that a lot of people ask oh, about. Oh boy. And it's really unfortunate because if we can be completely transparent, there's not really a great budget alternative. Yeah. There's, there's like no other card that's like, hey, extra deck. No. I don't draw? need it. Yeah, like, draw two. It's. Pot of Desires is probably our best pick. It did just get a reprint in the Tomb Chaos scent as a rare, so I know a lot of the Pot of Desires copies were floating to like eight to ten dollars, if I'm not mistaken. And now with the new 50 cent copy, it's super easy to get. It's a rare, everyone's got it. You can use our TCG affiliate link in the yeah. description box down below, and it can help the channel directly just by buying any of these budget cards you would already be getting just for yourself regardless. But Pot of Desires is a really good option. And then depending on the deck that you're playing, if you're playing Dark, you could play Allure of Darkness, drawing two cards and 
Banishing a Dark Monster does kind of have a steep cost, but instead of losing six cards out of your extra deck, you're just losing one dark out of your hand. But again, it depends on the deck you're playing. If you're not mm -hmm. playing a deck that relies on dark, it kind of sucks. And then the best option that we can give you, it's not a draw two, but is a draw one, and it's upstart. Giving your yeah. opponent a thousand life points to draw an additional card. It allows you to play a 39 card deck, so it ups the consistency a lot. It's really easy. Every single deck can play it. And though it is not part of Extravagance, Extrav did just get a reprint in the Toon Chaos set as well. It's currently sitting around $35 to $40. We know that that's still not like budget, but it is but way yeah. lower than it's like $100 it's to $80 less price than price. half, which sucks. I know that's never something we want to hear like, oh, it's still $40, yeah. but that's half the price. Yeah. It sucks for some of these cards because there really just isn't a perfect solution. Yeah. But And that being said, it is really hard to provide budget options because a lot of these cards are the price point that they are because of the impact they provide. Yes. Not only only yeah. for the player but for the deck and the strategy as well and we're not saying they should be that high price we do think some of these prices are Ridiculous. absurd but at the same time they are that absurd because they can be and if people can take advantage of it they will yep. which is unfortunate but and then the last card that a lot of people are asking for a budget oh my god all the time <laughs> is what Borloed Savage Dragon, our yep. sweet special boy. Borloed Savage Dragon is a super generic card. It's a Synchro 8. It's one tuner, one non-tuner. Every single deck in the entire format can make it. It's really, really strong. It's an Omni Negate, spells, traps, monsters, it's whatever, whatever. Gains attack. It's, it's the cards. The cards stupid. nuts. <laughs> so one of our budget options that we do have for this, it's not as generic, but it is still really strong. It's Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon is a Synchro 8. It requires one tuner and then one non-tuner synchro monster so you kind of have to commit three resources as opposed to two because you have to make that additional synchro first and then use another card to sync into it but it is really strong it is a monster negate it gains the attack in the battle step so it has a lot of that Borload savage vibe it's just not as good which we do understand but it is a really decent option i think the card's sitting at like two three dollars yeah. right now so as opposed to the 60 that savage is at it's way easier to obtain yeah and it was just reprinted in ots 13 so as a super, Yeet. you can get an ultra super secret, whatever your heart desires, friends. And then another alternative, in case you don't like Crystal Link, is Herald of the Arc Light. Herald, I think, is what, like four or five bucks, four or maybe? Four or five bucks right yeah. now. He's an Omni Negate. He's arguably easier to make than Savage because he's just a Synchro yeah. for four. Yep. Yeah. He's also a Floodgate. He's being played in pretty much every, every other Needle too. Fiber Turbo deck right now. <laughs> it's a Floodgate where you, any card that is sent from your hand or deck to the graveyard is banished instead really good right now in this format yep. and he's just a general omni the game yes he's very easy to beat over which is kind of the only sucky part of him but hey he's affordable he's an omni the game he's easy to make and it has the really decent effect too where if it's set from the field of the graveyard you could search any ritual monster from your deck to your hand a Ooh. lot of people are teching in Cerevis if they can't afford like a savage dragon okay. and then Cerevis is that little hand trap that allows you to not be he's targeted that cute little dragon yeah. old man it's super cute Ooh. which also just got a reprint in dual overload which is only sitting around a dollar so for five bucks total Total, you can get two negations. For just five dollars you can make your opponent really sad for two times. And the last budget alternative option for Savage that I kind of just thought of was Draco Berserker of the Tenny. He's also an eight synchro. He's yep. pretty good. I believe he also has a, like a built-in negate of his own. Yeah. People were playing him in and out of decks. It's kind of just like oh Savage was the better card. Yeah. So people were just playing that. But I would definitely look into this card. Hella cheap. Hella good. Yep. It can Why make not? like two attacks, I think. And the yeah. effect is that it doesn't actually negate the monster effect, but it's a quick effect that once the monster effect resolves, you just banish the monster. Yeah. So they get the effect, but they lose the monster. So it's like a built-in ghost ogre. Synchro A, I know it has like an attack boost or like an yeah. attack. Uh, Look, it's got a something. lot going on. Just read yeah. the card. It's, it's really, really darn strong. good and super budget friendly. So definitely consider that. And super generic also. Wow, weren't those some fun budget options? Let's talk about some budget decks. But before we do that, let's talk about the giveaway winner. Dun, 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 dun. So last week we did a little nostalgic opening of all of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Funko Pops that just came out along with some really cool, like, coin collector series things yeah. we got online. So And stuff in our P.O. Box. And stuff from the P.O. <laughs> box. In case you weren't sure we had a P.O. Box, we have a P.O. Box. Woo! But we decided to do a giveaway of the extra Funko Yugi Pop that we had along with a sealed box of the Legendary Duelist Season 1 set that just came out. So it's kind of a fun little giveaway we just wanted to do saying yeah. thanks and all that fun stuff. So, winner of this lovely little baby giveaway. I hope you're watching. If you're not watching, it's going to really suck for you, winner. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Change the clown! Yay! Yay! I really like wholesome comments.
comments and wholesome comments make me really happy. This one mentioned grandmas and I love my grandma. So this one got to me really quickly. The comments for this were really good. Yeah, like, these were really, they, really they great were all, We had to like really buckle down for this one. Yeah, they we were, had to roll a die for this. It was like oh six my God, we really there were so, so many we were really convinced on. So you guys left some really great, hilarious, wholesome, emotional stories. <laughs> I hope you know that they were all wonderful. We read every single one of them. I love them. But thank you to everyone who entered. We will be doing a giveaway of Battles of Legend Armageddon, which is coming out in like two, two weeks. weeks. So, so stick around. Stick around, tell your friends, come hang out with the dream team. <laughs> but Chains the Clown, message us on Instagram. We love you, babe. Thanks for being great. Thanks for all of you for entering. We love you. You're absolutely perfect. Mwah. Let's talk more budget stuff. So moving on into some of the more budget decks for this entire meta game that we have in this season of no meta, Nothing. it's really <laughs> difficult, but there are a couple that did come to mind, the first of which is dinosaurs. We went over a few dinosaur builds on our channel, one of which is Shadal's, and then one of which is Pure. The deck is super duper budget, especially with the new reprint of the structure deck. Yeah. You only need a few cards outside of the deck to make the deck mm -hmm. really playable, really consistent, and then also really meta viable. With that being said, there are some extra deck choices, as we said in the very beginning of the video, like Appaloosa or Access Code, that if you don't want to play those cards, you don't need to. The deck is super yeah. consistent yeah. regardless. There are a couple builds floating around that are playing Extravagance, which maybe you can play if you do have the access to cards like that, or if not, you don't have to play that. You can just play other cards like Upstart and then just make your deck more consistent. Mm -hmm. Dinosaurs have never really needed their extra deck anyway, so you can kind of just do whatever with the extra deck. You yeah. really just need UCT in order to just go barrel down <laughs> whatever your opponent's crazy. playing, so extra deck is whatever. Who yeah. cares anyway? You don't need Extrav. Animador and Archosaur is just a really nice extender piece that kind of just turbos the deck even more. So if you don't want to splurge on Archosaur or Extrav, you can still play the deck and it's still super meta viable. I mean, yeah. I was playing with Extrav and Animador and Archosaur a while ago when I first started the game last year, so yeah. it's possible. Yeah, you can play the Shadal variant instead, which is blind second, tries yeah. to break the board and just goes in and OTKs your opponent. Really yeah, well. Shadal's a super budget viable version of the deck, frankly. And for what it's worth, the Animador and Archosaur card I believe is sitting around $25, mm -hmm. but Two is the easiest and best way to play the deck, but you can just get by with one. You just kind of got to hope you don't draw it. You Hell, really you just don't need, need it, it in the Forget deck. Forget it. The only real card that's actually good and kind of necessary for the deck is Double Evolution Pill, and it doesn't come in the structure deck itself, but it did just get reprinted in Dual Overload, and it's like a couple dollars, yeah, so it's not bad. bad at all. Totally accessible. And you have the option to main deck Pankratops, which is never a bad option in this metagame. So Dinosaur's best deck. <laughs> best budget deck. Hell yeah! Moving on. And then the second budget deck that we were able to come up with, which is Salamangrate. Everyone's been playing this deck. This deck has been tier one since the day it came out. One could say that it's probably like tier 1.5, mm -hmm. maybe tier two right now, just because Adam Emancipator and Eldritch are dominating the metagame. But Salamangrate, the core is less than $30. Yeah. And the, yeah, the reason that the deck is so, so budget is because not only does the engine only require like maybe 15 cards, mm -hmm. but that engine just loops itself. It's super duper consistent. You get everything back. Every Every single turn if you play the deck correctly Ridiculous. and it has the ability to main deck 35 hand traps if you really want. That's kind of one of the benefactors and one of the downfalls mm -hmm. to this deck because a lot of hand traps like in Perm sit around 35 bucks a piece, Ash is 10 bucks a piece, Baylor though is what maybe a dollar, Ghost yeah. Ogre is a dollar, Bells. a lot of people, Bells really yeah, a lot of people are playing Winter Chairs believe it or not because you yeah. can just hit the needle, needle fiber, fiber it's crazy but all those are like maybe a dollar, two dollars mm -hmm. so if you want to sub out some of the more expensive hand traps you mm -hmm. can put those in in place it's really really easy to do and you can also play some of the trap variants of the deck that are playing things like breakthrough skill to substitute yeah. for impermanence or just max out on your rages and your roars. Yeah, I bet you guys never thought we'd be telling you to play a salad deck, <laughs> yeah. but not Here big we are. Fan how, salad. How 2020 <laughs> is really changing us. And then one of the really, really budget-friendly options that came out to help Salamangrate great was Parallel Exceed out of Eternity Code. It is a common that's maybe a dollar, if not less than a dollar. I know that Access Code Talker is like the new win condition, but you can still just play the Update Jammer Trans Code Talker yeah. OTK variant. I think those cards are still play $2. Play Woo! Yeah, it's really, really consistent and just super easy to make these cards still. Mm -hmm. So Salad, really budget deck, super competitive yeah. still. Those are the two decks that we think are the most budget and competitive viable meta 
decks of the time right now. Yeah. Dinosaurs and Salad Man. They're really good. Shadal is also a really great budget deck too if you want to build that. And we just want to be really transparent with you also. We know that a lot of other people in the community talk about budget decks and mm -hmm. how easy it is to build these decks, but if we're being completely honest, in a real life tournament, not only do you have your main deck and your extra deck, you also have your side deck. So trying to build these decks to be super competitive with like an access code or maybe not playing the access code, but playing the trans code and the update jammer, it does allow you to spend a little bit more money on your side deck. And we could argue too that your side deck is kind of what wins you games two and three regardless. Mm -hmm. So spending money on that side deck to make sure your deck is just a little bit more competitive yeah. than your opponent, definitely worth investing there also. So yeah. when it comes to deck building, make sure that you guys allocate your budget properly for yeah. your main, extra, and side deck. Yeah, don't sleep on the side deck because that really is kind of your win con for a lot of games two and three. Yeah. And if you don't have a side deck that's ready to counter whatever you're playing against, whether it's meta or whether it's casual or whatever, <sighs> like don't forget about the side deck. Yeah. People tend to sleep on it or just not talk about it and how expensive it can be. So do not forget about your side deck. Yeah. It is very important. And if you want us to talk about a budget side deck video, say yeah, so. Let us just know. literally let us know because we'll talk about it. And if you guys are interested in any of our side deck choices, we do have all of them on Patreon. The link is in the description box down below. Ooh. Some of them are budget friendly, some of them aren't, but you get to see every single side deck choice that we are choosing in every deck that we've put up and not only what we choose to side in, but what we choose to side out also. But anyway, time for some nice budget advice for the family. Let's all just yeah. talk about how we should budget and why it's important and how you can even do it because a lot of people don't really know how to go about budgeting a deck mm -hmm. or why. So first and foremost, we want to address Middles and how perfect he is. <laughs> hi Middles, you look great today. YouTube oh Adam. They just wanted to say hi. Okay. So when it comes to budgeting, we do want to actually address the commitment issues and the investments, right? So as we talked about before, we know that a card like Appaloosa and Borlode Savage Dragon are extremely expensive right now. That being said though, you only need one Appaloosa or one Borlode mm -hmm. Savage Dragon. So if you do make the investment, you can play those cards in any yeah. deck that you choose to build from that point on. So that's also something to think about. We know they are very expensive, but like all the deck profiles that you guys see, we'll just be honest, we only have two Borlode Savage. Yeah. One for me, one for Logan. And we pulled them forever ago yeah. when Savage Strike came out. Yeah, like. like we put them in and out of every deck. We don't have mm -hmm. 45 of them to go into every deck. Yeah. We do swap cards, so that is definitely an option when it comes to budgeting. I know that they are still relatively expensive, but if you do have the one, you can put it anywhere that you need it. One is all you need. And that being said too, when it comes to deck building and lists for decks, we encourage you guys maybe go online, look at some lists, and then pilot the deck on an online simulator, or just like maybe print out some proxy cards and play with your friends mm -hmm. at home before you actually make the investment to go out and buy some of these more expensive cards. Because we found out for like dinosaurs when we were building it, we were looking for three Animador and Archosaurs. Turns out you only you need, need two. Yeah. So that being said, figure out your ratios before you mm -hmm. go and spend all these money on these cards that you may not need three of, maybe you only need one of. So that being said, Make sure that you guys have your list ready before you go and actually pick up the deck and make sure that you guys are looking at the deck and the viability for the long term meta. Mm -hmm. Like Salamangrate might be a really good budget deck. That being said, it's also been in the meta for two years so it's probably more likely to get hit than a deck like Eldritch or Emancipator. Yeah, feel good about the build you have and honestly just settle on a build. Mm -hmm. Because if you just keep flabbering between like builds being like, oh I don't know what I want, oh but this one's really expensive, oh but this one's really not, like just Settle. Yeah. Just commit to your build. Be confident. <laughs> yeah. And also with that being said too, if you're going to get like 8 to 9 to 10 to 12 months out of a deck like we were able to do with Orcus and all those mm -hmm. other decks like Thunder, sometimes the investment really is worthwhile. If you pay $600 for a deck but you have to play it for a whole year, that's only a couple bucks a day still. Like that's really cheap when it comes to deck building. Or if you're nervous about a deck getting hit, just kind of play it safe. I mean, Salad's been around for a while Two now. Years. Orcus has been around for a while. Like yeah. pick a deck that you're like, all right, this deck has kind of been hanging around for a while. It's probably not going to get killed off anytime soon. Or just build a deck that's already dead like Sky Striker. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> but for example, you know dinosaurs aren't going to get murdered off the meta. Like yeah. that's just not going to happen. Dinosaurs have been around for, <laughs> that's ironic, but dinosaurs have been around <laughs> for a while. Because <laughs> oh, they're gone. Um, salads have been around for a while. Just like pick a deck that you're like, oh, logically this could stay in the meta for a while. Yeah. So you know what? I mean, it's a gamble. This whole game is a gamble. Yu-Gi-Oh! is a gamble. It's a big old expensive gamble that we're not necessarily proud of how expensive mm -hmm. it is. But 
Sometimes you gotta do it. And that being said too, when it comes to advice, the advice that we can give you guys that we do for ourselves is look at the actual sets that Konami is putting out, what cards are in those sets, and what they're gonna bump, right? So like dinosaurs, as Logan just said, probably not gonna get like obliterated. It might get hit, but it's not gonna get destroyed. They just reprinted the entire structure deck for everyone to have access to. Yeah. There's no way that Konami is gonna go and butcher the deck just a couple weeks after they release the product. They want to sell product, even though we are players and we love to have fun, mm -hmm. play the game, win, lose, learn, whatever. Yeah. Konami's a business. They wanna make money. Mm -hmm. So they're not gonna obliterate a deck that just got a reprint. Same thing goes for something like Orcus. They just gave the Mech Knight Gear Suit card a printing, mm -hmm. which is something we've been waiting for for a while. So I do think it's safe to say that a deck like Orcus is really going to be viable. I don't think they're gonna touch it. As we said, we know they're not budget options, but Ad Emancipator, Eldritch, these things just did come out. Yeah. We know that a lot of people don't like Needle Fiber, but Needle Fiber has only been mm -hmm. in the game, even though it hasn't been on like on a physical table yet, for maybe a month. There's yeah. no way they're gonna ban these cards or these decks and make them unplayable because they still want to sell these products. And then with no organized play really happening in the grand scheme of things for who knows how long, I don't think making an investment is a bad idea. Yeah. You can always wait on Appaloosa with the gold tins coming out. Obviously, we don't even know what other reprints are coming yep. out. Armageddon has like nothing announced other than a Danger Jackalope. <laughs> yeah, Lion. a couple sequels, like, yeah. Okay. So keep your eye out. You need to pay attention to what cards are coming out and what set. We have to really keep an eye out, like eagle eye, what's happening, like what's yeah. coming out. You have to know because then you'll be able to predict the prices of things. Are they going to spike? Are they going to go down? And for your own investing sake, you need to be knowledgeable about yeah. those things. Easily. And then lastly, when it comes to budgeting, we know that this is not like a lecture, but it is something to talk about because no one really talks about it. I don't think there's any channel out there that's actually had this conversation. Welcome to Cash Cards. We're <laughs> here to talk about budgeting with you. But it's basically like, say you want a $90, $80 Appaloosa, and you know that you can't afford that all in one week. Mm -hmm. Maybe dedicate a month of saving up to that. Put like $10 to $15 aside every week, and then slowly build up so that when you want the card and you have enough money, you can actually go get it. We know that that does require sacrifices, but for us, we've chosen to maybe cook at home a Couple more times instead of going out to eat and we'll take that money and put it aside for certain decks that we're trying to build instead it is a lot of discipline like a lot of this is gonna come down to like you need to just discipline yourself sometimes yeah. and if not these alternatives are here to help you and if not please comment and let us know things that we can yeah. help you with more so that we can do more with this because we haven't really talked about budget much but we'd like to make this a more open conversation of course and we do know that a lot of people have more than one deck so maybe just commit to that one deck that you know you're going to have the longevity of playing mm -hmm. break up the other stuff and put it in your trade binder you can trade for these cards instead of buying them the other option is just buying the singles as we just mentioned as opposed to like us going nuts and buying <laughs> yeah. 15 boxes to see cards that you want Yes. <laughs> don't do that. Yeah. That's terrible. We do that so you guys don't have to. Well, with that being said, just kind of an overarching theme and closing thought is that, yes, a lot of these cards are expensive and they're very, very good cards that can make your deck super, super meta viable. And sometimes that's all you need for a deck to be good. Yeah. But another really important thing that is something that needs to be reminded is it's also about the pilot of the deck. Correct. Just because someone is playing a deck really well doesn't mean that you just buy the deck and you're going to be really good at it. We've yeah. said this in other videos. You have to know how to play the deck. Yep. You could have the best deck put in front of you and not have a damn clue how to play it. And you'll be like, well, this sucks. Why does this deck suck? Yeah. It doesn't suck. You need to know how to play it. And you need to take the time and the actual thought to really learn that deck. So find a deck that you want to play. Just picking a good deck online or seeing it and thinking, oh, that's a good deck. It's not always fact. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes it's not even how you pilot the deck, but it's knowing how the deck pilots with you around mm -hmm. the meta also. Mm -hmm. You gotta know the interactions it has with maybe like an Ad Emancipator build or with the Synchro Eldritch build or Dinosaurs. You gotta know not only how your deck plays, but also how to play around those decks. So it's not always about money. It is a lot about knowledge and the access to the play testing mm -hmm. that you have. So if you guys want, feel free to link up with some of your friends and get online and test against some of mm -hmm. these decks. Online play is probably the easiest access and it's free right now you don't have to buy it. free 99 is yeah. always nice but we hope that some of this was helpful for you again this was kind of just an overarching budget video if you have other budget options other things you'd like us to talk about that are budget related or just ideas in general please let us know in the comments again this is the first real budget conversation we've had we are not professionals but we're just <laughs> trying to help yeah. and provide options to the community because you guys are important and you matter and I say that all the time but we hope you guys enjoyed this video please let me know by leaving a like a like would really help. I'll see it and I'll think of you. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching this video. Giveaway winner, I hope you watch the video because it's somewhere that way. Message us on Instagram mm -hmm. and we will get in contact with you that way. Yes. 
But we hope you guys have a wonderful Wednesday. We will see you tomorrow. We have some fun stuff planned this week, so keep oh, an eye yeah. out. There's a whole lot going on. It's going to be a good time. And we're pushing 15K, which is pretty darn cool. So Woo. tell your friends and let's make this family something special, which it already is. But we love you. You matter. Dumpling says hi. Middle said bye. And Tops is going to say bye too in just a second. All right, team. Love you. Big kisses. Have a great Wednesday, guys. Bye. Bye, friends. Have a great Wednesday. Bad that you can't afford all these cards. I can't either. I'm a baby.